Oh, man, we had that drama mama in the NBA last night. So Joel Embiid sinks Toronto with this game-winning three in overtime. No team has ever lost a series after building a 3-0 lead. The Celtics rally from 17 points down to knock off the Nets with KD and Kyrie just going absolutely cold in the second half. Then there was DeMar DeRozan delivering the highest scoring playoff performance of his career, helping the Bulls steal game two in Milwaukee and evening the series against the Bucs. Three more games on the site tonight and three dudes here to talk about it. DraftKings contributors, Matt Meiselman, Gary and Thorne, DK Nations, Chinmay Vedia. Uh, Gary, and I'll start with you. Who's your go-to top price DFS player tonight? Talk to me, Goose. Yeah, I think with uh, the status of Luka Doncic still kind of up in the air, for me, it's it's pretty obviously John Morant. Um, I, I think you have to look at this as a situation where just with this game being in Minnesota, maybe it can stay relatively competitive. I know that was kind of an issue for a lot of Timberwolves games this season. They either won by 20 or lost by 20. Uh, but Morant has been able to put up some massive numbers despite really not playing what we would consider playoff minutes. Uh, but he's averaging 1.54 DraftKings points per minute in the first two games of this series. His usage rate is up over 33%. And coming as a surprise to no one, this is by far the fastest paced series we've had of the first round. Uh, they are averaging 104.3 possessions per 48 minutes, which is three full possessions more than any other series. So I think you have to really exploit this game. And I think Morant on the off chance that he is forced into a situation where he has to play 36 to 40 minutes uh, at that, in that particular set of circumstances, he could be looking at like 65 or 70 DraftKings points. Okay. Chinmay, uh, what do you want to do here? I like Morant. He's a good play and I think he's going to have a good game, but I think you have to go with Nikola Jokic, the big man for the Denver Nuggets. He has been absolutely on fire despite Denver really struggling. And even though those games haven't been that close, Jokic is averaging 25 and a half points, 10 and a half rebounds, five assists, two steals and one and a half blocks. And he's basically filling up every stat category that you want. I think that's money well spent. If you're going to pay up for somebody, you got to pay up for Denver's big man who enters tonight's game three in, in a massive spot for, for his team. He really needs that game. Denver really needs that game. I think Jokic has a big one tonight. Okay. Yeah. Most expensive player on the slate there, Maddie. Uh, how much money are you planning to spend here? You're going to go all the way to the top like Chin May? Well, it's tough having the third pick in the DFS draft. Today, <laughs> these, these guys took my first two favorite players on the slate. So I'll just go to my third favorite, and it's actually – I'm stretching the rules here on paying up, but Rudy Gobert at 7,600 I think qualifies as a bit of a payoff option. And I think for tournaments tonight, what's going to happen is Jokic is sort of a can't miss, and then Carl Anthony Towns is way underpriced. So if you're playing cash games, I think Towns makes sense. But because Gobert is a center just like these other guys, he almost has to go overlooked. And we haven't seen Gobert have a good offensive game yet in this series. He scored below 10 points in both of them. Generally, Rudy Gobert is a double-double machine, and the double-double bonus is a pretty big boost to his fantasy production. So the rebounds are going to be there. He's playing big minutes. He's going to block some shots. And I think at lower ownership than the other centers, if we get 15 real points out of him, it could be a pretty massive fantasy game. So I think Gobert is a contrarian pivot off of these other centers. Um, this is the pick I made a couple of days ago. I'm just going right back to the well. I, I like Rudy for tonight. All right. So Chinmay, like you're spending a boatload of money tonight on the highest price player on this three game slate. So what's your favorite value play tonight? There are a couple of good ones in the Grizzlies game. Uh, Desmond Bain and Dylan Brooks are both in that six K range. That could be decent options, but I actually like Brandon Clark. He's under five K listed at 4,700 right now. 13 points, seven and a half rebounds in the last two games uh, as his average, 25 minutes a game. And the Grizzlies have learned that Steven Adams basically cannot take the floor for extended minutes against Carl Anthony Towns. So Jenkins, uh, the head coach there, has learned that, that Adams is not going to be an option, which means that Brandon Clark is, is due for extended minutes once again. So I like him as the value play under 5K. But if you do have the money to spend up, Bain and Brooks are probably going to deliver more upside uh, as, as starters who get heavy minutes for the Grizzlies. Yeah, Clark has surpassed the season average of minutes, too, in both games of this series. Maddie, what do you want to do in the value department? I'm glad Chinmay brought this situation up because this is where I'm looking, too. And unfortunately, I thought Steven Adams was a good play last game. Certainly can't go back there. Um, 
I, I maybe I'm stretching the rules again a little bit, but Jaron Jackson at 6,300, I think he's sort of a value play. I don't think his fantasy projections are going to look all that good, but Clark makes sense. He's cheaper. And I think a lot of people will play him. I think a decent amount of the field will play Xavier Tillman who stepped up when Adams went out last game, Jaron Jackson has a ton of upside as a fantasy player. He just always gets in foul trouble. And for tournaments, if you can just get a game where he doesn't get in foul trouble, we're, we're seeing that Adams is getting run off the court in this series. So there could be parts of the game where Jackson's actually playing center and the fouls are going to be a concern. Like if you roster him, don't watch because he's probably going to pick up fouls. It's going to be very <laughs> frustrating, but I think that there's a lot of upside for that $6,300 price tag. And I don't think too many people are going to play him. Yeah. And Jackson can put up monster numbers too, Matt, on the defensive end. Like when he blocks seven shots uh, in game one, uh, Gary, and who do you want as your value play tonight? You got a top guy? Yeah, I think we've all kind of identified the exact same positional group in the same game. Um, I think both coaches have as well as these guys were talking about. I mean, this isn't really a series where Steven Adams or Nas Reed have been all that involved, at least on a consistent basis. Uh, so I think you start looking at guys that they've already mentioned, and even someone like Jaden McDaniels, who is $3,600. He's played over 20 minutes in both of the uh, first two games of this series. And really, we, we saw the highs and the lows with McDaniels. He had 34 DraftKings points in game one, then nine DraftKings points in game two. But that really just came down to shooting variance. I mean, I think more than likely the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And if you're looking at 20 to 25 DraftKings points for someone who is just $3,600, again, playing in by far the best environment on this slate, I think that's a pretty good direction to go. If you do want someone who's playing in a different game, um, I think like Gary Payton, the third uh, pretty locked into like 20 minutes is less than $3,500. Uh, even like Nemanja Bialica also seems like he's locked into about 20 minutes for the Warriors. So there are other places to go, but I, I do think spamming this particular Memphis, uh, Memphis, Minnesota game is, is probably the best course of action. All right. Well, Maddie, let's go over to the DK sports book here. What's your favorite player prop on the DK sports book tonight? So this will probably be a pretty boring one if you choose to go with this and watch it. But D'Angelo Russell's assist line just seems too high to me. And I think partly what happened here is that at the end of the regular season, Patrick Beverly missed a couple games and Russell had a few big assist totals in Beverly's absence. He put up 11 assists and nine assists. And I think it was the last two games of the regular season, at least the ones that he played in. So six and a half assists, the unders plus 110, I don't think Russell gets to seven assists in, in half of his games. I actually think it's more likely than not he comes in under that and you're getting plus money on it. So it's never fun to root for unders, I guess, unless you're me. But for most people, it's not that fun to root for unders on player props. I just think this number is too high. We probably see it come down throughout the day. All right, Chin there. Chin May, what about you, dude? I'm going the other way on this uh, for Matt. I'm going to root for an over plus money prop. I like Rice, Royce O'Neal. Over one and a half three pointers at plus 115. He hit four in the last game. And the Jazz need some of their peripheral players to step up. Uh, O'Neill's home shooting splits this season are a bit concerning. So I can understand why people will look at that and say, okay, this guy is probably not going to uh to get to this total. But it's only he only needs two threes, and he's pretty much good for one in most of his games. He hit four in the last game. He's shooting well at the moment. I think the Jazz need to get some of their other guys involved. So I like Royce O'Neal over one and a half three pointers plus one fifteen. That's the one that that I'm going with tonight. Gary, what's your favorite player prop tonight? I was worried when Matt was talking about a boring one because this this feels like um, <clears throat> excuse me uh, this feels like when he took Isaiah Stewart over half a three pointer uh, towards the end of the regular <laughs> season, but uh, a little more accomplished three point shooter. But the exact same line. Uh, I'm going to go with Draymond Green over half a three pointer in tonight's game it is plus money at plus 105 teams just change the way they guard Draymond in the playoffs you can be far more experimental and far more I mean really risk averse in the playoffs just letting Draymond shoot letting him try that backpack jumper all he wants uh, and it bears out in the numbers for his career during the regular season he averages 2.6 three-point attempts per game in the playoffs that number jumps to 3.7 uh, he's already attempted five in this series. He's made one in each of the first two games. I just think he's going to take like three threes tonight. They're going to be absolutely wide open and he probably makes one. And I think it's, it's enough for me at plus one Oh five uh, to watch Draymond shoot and just pray one goes in. All right. Chin May bring us home with that slight approved pick favorite bet on the board is what and why. I do like the Timberwolves money line at home. It's plus one Oh five right now. It'll probably drop a little bit. The Timberwolves, 26 and 15 at home. 
in the regular season. They've been competitive against the Grizzlies, and I know that blowout game in game two will, will turn some people off, but this team is so much better at home than they are on the road, and I think they get the job done tonight against the Grizzlies, giving Minnesota at home as the money line underdog. Maddie, what do you want? I actually like both home underdogs tonight, but the game that's more important to me than both of those is the Utah Jazz. And I'm pretty sure Luka Doncic is not playing. Like, that's really the big thing for the Jazz Mavericks game. Just based on all of the reports that came out yesterday, I think all indications are that Doncic actually plays game four, not game three. They're calling him questionable, and they're talking about his risk of re-injury which I don't think has much to do with how he feels. I think they're more concerned with let's keep him healthy to try to make a deeper run in the playoffs. And because the Mavericks, and this, this is like the main factor for me, because the Mavericks won game two, they can afford to lose game three or at least try to play it without him. So this is not a must win game. I think they have to get a split in Utah, but they don't necessarily have to win tonight. So I think John Trish sits out one more game. And in that scenario, jazz minus six and a half, that's just way too low of a line. I think we see it get up to like minus 10 once he's finally ruled out. Gary, what's your favorite bet on the board tonight? I'm going to take the Mavs points. Um, I, I, I agree with Matt. I, I think we're probably looking at like a 40, 60 scenario here with Luca tonight. Um, but at the same time, I mean, questionable in the playoffs just doesn't generally mean the same thing as questionable in the regular season. I think doubtful is kind of questionable in the playoffs. If you look at history and, and maybe this is special circumstance, obviously we're in a weird situation where like Matt mentioned, this is more about risk of re-injury and, and Luca even saying yesterday, he doesn't want to kind of play like Steph Curry. He doesn't want six minute spurts. He wants to be able to play like he normally plays in a game. And maybe that does limit him in this contest. Um, but I look at a jazz team that, I mean, they went six, 18 and two against the spread um, when they had to play a team above 500 and maybe the Mavericks aren't above 500 without Luka Doncic, but I just don't really trust the jazz right now. So even if this turns out that Luka doesn't play and, and Matt's right, this probably gets to something like nine and a half or 10. I'm still comfortable taking the Mavs plus six and a half.